Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Road Magic Music Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Adam Zonis, and we got budding country musician and veteran, all types of other music, music musician, Jordan Matchett, as uh, the guest today. Super awesome guy. Met him last year in Tofino. You clue it. Yeah, it's not Tofino. I mean, Euclid. same difference. Don't tell that to people from you clue it. And uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, we've been crossing paths ever since and talking music. So um, yeah, why don't we start off? Why don't you just tell us a little bit about who you are, uh, where you come from, and how you wound up where you are today? Sure. Uh, well, I'm, I'm born in Miramichi, New Brunswick. So I'm uh, way out east. And yeah, um, like long walks on the beach, country music, and oysters. <laughs> uh, yeah, but um, ultimately grew up in pretty rural New Brunswick. Um, music's really always been a part of my life, always been there kind of thing, and uh, always connected with it. Always one of those things that you just always truly authentically connected with it. It was just couldn't get it out of there. And... Yeah, um, over the years, finally came across a guitar at a at a summer camp from a, a, a campmate one day, um, an old ovation that I'll never forget because the for any guitarists out there, the the round bowl, the people find it awkward, but I didn't know any better back then. And a camp counselor said that you know I have a pretty good strum hand, maybe I should take to it and. But six months later, Christmas came and Santa brings you a, a Nova classical guitar nylon string that you can rock out on so hard from the Sears catalog for Christmas. And uh, not long after that, I ended up um, in about in grade eight or so getting saved in a Pentecostal church. And like a lot of other church musicians, just fervently kind of got stuck in that world. And uh, yeah, um, just had really great musical mentors back then. Um, I was telling Adam, like when the, again, for the gear heads out there, when the first in-ear monitors came out around 2006 or so, our worship team at our church started playing Sunday mornings to click to metronome dot, 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 dot. So, uh, pretty high caliber of, of people to, to kind of be around and, and, and garner influence from. Um, yeah. And then, uh. You just keep playing and playing and playing. I was listening to like a lot of John Mayer, a lot of White Stripes back then when I wasn't playing pop music in church. Um, getting into blues as, as heavy as I kind of could. Messing around with sly guitar and all that kind of stuff. But ultimately, I really found myself liking songs and, and writing songs and, uh, and kind of fell into that. And then, um, yeah, that's kind of basically how I got into music so so much because we didn't really have too many people in our family that played music um, up until like later on in, in my late 20s when I realized that my grandmother on my mother's side that I never met, she used to be a very, very good um, squeeze box, piano, fiddle player uh, and would play like our local legions almost every weekend. So that was kind of quite a trip to find out um, many years later after that kind of disconnect. Yeah, great. So um, in the pre-chat, we were talking a little bit about how you came out here during the 2010 recession and you, you had the choice right. between McMurray or the Army or, uh, you know, playing music. Um, yeah. And so you've toured a lot since then here and back, crisscrossing. Can you talk a little bit about um, what it's been like traveling across the country and some of your more notable experiences uh, through that? Yeah, absolutely. Um I, st I landed in Calgary in 2010 uh, because I was, as Adam mentioned, uh, just kind of given a choice whether it was like the military out in New Brunswick because you really couldn't buy a job in, in 2010 when all the stuff was going down. Um, so it was either going the military or I wasn't raised by really my, my mom or dad. So my dad was out there living with a, with an aunt and uncle of mine. And it was you know either this or, or to start developing a relationship like that. And so I thought to myself, well, there's no colonel finding Elvis or Johnny Cash in the military anymore. And uh, my best bet is probably, probably West. And it was probably one of the scare. it was up until this day, the scariest decision because you don't know what's out there. I never did too much traveling, like a lot of Maritimers, um, unless they had to go up to the Fort Mac. And uh, so I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. And then in Calgary, 
it was like the grass was always greener. I remember one of my most favorable uh, musical memories in, in Western Canada was getting fired from Grand and Toy office supplies <laughs> and coming and coming home to my aunt who I was staying with. This is the first six months that I've been at West. And I have to tell her. And the next day she takes me and my guitar, which I had a 62K Swing Master, which is not an acoustic guitar at all. Um, she took me down to Stephen Avenue in Calgary for anybody who knows where that is. It's right downtown. And she I remember her reaching across from me, opening up the door, opening the door for me. And she says, all right, get out. And I said, what's going on? Like, what are we doing? And she's like, you're going to go out there and play all day. And I said, wait, you're giving me permission to go play? Because out in Eastern Canada, busking is more of like an impoverished, like that's a sign of poverty, truly. And my parents would never have let me do that. My aunt and uncle that raised me would ne never have let me do that. So that day, I truly found liberty. And uh, busking and street performing has been something that has served me really well, not just as a musician, but as uh, in my social life as well, being able to deal with uh, a diverse amount of characters. Oh, wow. Well. That's a really awesome story to be like, I got to be honest. I like personally, I hate busking because I'm uh, just uh, way too egotistical to have people walk by me and not throw money at me, I guess. I don't know what it is. I, I, I can't take it. You know, I'm like, stop and listen, stop and listen. And, you know, like to be as someone who can like um, not just handle that, uh, that situation, but really thrive on it. To me, it's something that I've always really respected is a good busker. Because well, that I day was... didn't go great. That day, I think yeah. I came home with about sixty dollars after eight hours. And but as a kid, you know, well, that's, that's for, that, it's a nice, it's a nice start. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah. So I just gotta say respect to anyone and, and you who can get out there and busk it because because it's like busking is like the ultimate um, vulnerability as a musician. Like you're, it's playing... the best practice that you can ever get. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, so that that's great. So. um Tell me during some of these, after that busking uh, experience, um, what is maybe your biggest like rock star or rock and roll or crazy experience that comes to mind right now that music brought you to? I can't say too much about about that, really. <laughs> but what I, what I will I will give a, a PG version of that. And uh, it was several years later um, from 2020. We're probably we'll fast forward back to forward i guess to 2014 or 15 um or yeah 2010 so towards oh. 2014 2015 rather your, your, um, your lack of knowledge of the year tells me it's going to be a good story i have a bad delorean <laughs> it's always messing me up uh the delorean it's always <laughs> it's i don't know who's setting it some days but um one uh, there's a place called the Sharky Grill over in Vancouver, over in Kitsilano, and uh, I had I had a few people kind of help me out with my transition to Vancouver whenever I first moved there, and Sharky Grill was a place that I kind of landed on a little bit, and my first gig there, there was a like a kids hockey team that was there, and I think probably as far as PG moments go. Um, my best rock and roll moment was the first time that I ever got asked for an autograph. And, and it was like, I was just, I was only 20, 24 going on 25 years old and never happened before. Never thought about the fact of it happening either, um, but it happened. And, um, it, it made me feel a real different way about what I was doing. That's, that's definitely for sure. Um, mm -hmm. and it, and it was just a kid. It was like a 13 year old kid. And at the same time, I thought to myself, man, I don't know what you think I'm going to be, but, uh, maybe he saw something that, that remains to be seen. I don't know. Yeah, for sure. Well, that's a great story. Um, how, let's, uh, how about a little bit of live entertainment? Yeah. How about it? How about singing a song? Hey, Candy, can you come out now? Just joke. <laughs> <laughs> a true entertainer uh, yeah. full spectrum <laughs> show <laughs> so we're gonna do a tune about uh the old miramichi river and this is a tune that i wrote called been too long <laughs> Thank you. 
It's a place on the river called the Miramichi, where I was raised in a part of me. But how to make his way way out west, and not every man with passion in his breath. Well, my high school was so damn small. He couldn't do a crime and no and not know. Neighbors on her side want to know your business. You can't mow the lawn in your brand new fishnets now. Been too long since I've been home. Couldn't care which way that I'm gone. Always a hopeful George is getting on. When every goodbye it's hard. When every goodbye it's hard. Well, 17, I didn't stay home. Took out west and flew Toronto. Well, 18 came with grave mistakes. 19 sent me back up on my feet. It wasn't too cool going through high school. But when I was a kid, I had a pool. Didn't go down to the South Bridge, no. Going to church, the time could weigh its heart. Been too long since I've been home. Couldn't care which way that I'm gone. What was a whole old George is getting on? When every goodbye it's hard. When every goodbye it's hard. When the West Coast salt hits my nose, I'll always think of the East Coast and how no work put us out. Making our names, look at us now. Been too long since I've been home. Couldn't care which way that I'm gone. Always a hope old George is getting on. When every goodbye hits hard. When every goodbye it's hard When every goodbye it's hard Woo and the crowd goes wild Oh that was super nice man um I really like the the personal Thank you. The story, you know, like I'm a, I'm a big fan of music that when people write it, when it's about themselves, you know, and, uh, you know, well, there's I, not enough, I think there's not enough of that music going around these days. I think mm -hmm. everybody wants to kind of speak in um like limericks and metaphors. And uh, I think that's been cool for like, you know, the past seven years. But I think that people are really now more than ever wanting to, uh, particularly after the schmear schmemek. Um, people mm -hmm. really want to relate to each other more than ever. And I think that by sharing personal stories, uh, which is not business, business-wise, not great, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so it's, uh, yeah. yeah, people people really want to hear what other people are going through. So you got some comments during the song. You got, they, they, these are their YouTube channel names, so sometimes they're not the real name, but Tay <laughs> Tay J Noonan Teach 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 Noonan Teach Noonan uh, the DeLorean is only putting out 1.06 gigawatts it needs 1.2 I think he's talking got, about the amplifier uh, Yeah you got uh Vernon Jardine uh, uh Oh 
I don't know him. I don't know him. Yeah, yeah. He says, uh, right on, George. Proud of you. Mom and okay, dad. Okay, no, actually, I do know that guy. I yeah, do know yeah, him. right, right, right. <laughs> and uh, Concroft, Concraft says, you. And you got some applause as well. So I love um, I love a good you. There is really nothing better than a good you. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you're getting into country, though, you, you got to be moving into the yee-haw, right? I go, I go, I go more for hee ha. Hee ha, right? <laughs> those are those are my uh, those are my gender pronouns for yeah, 2024 yeah. and 2025. Hee and ha. Hee ha, donkey rock. Hee ha. <laughs> That's hilarious. Right on. <laughs> so um, yeah, let's talk a little bit about uh, what the future holds, where you're going to be taking the music, what your goals are for the next little while, and where you think you're going to wind up, or where you hope to wind up, or where you're open well, to winding up. As the great Natalie Imbruglia once said, the future is unwritten. Um, and the same thing goes for, for me. Uh, I recently, just as as you know, Adam, uh, got kind of got bit by the country bug in a really big way. Um, I think that uh, I've become a, a real stereotype. And, I, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm so proud of it because we all run from mom and dad's music. And then one day we end up playing mom and dad's music. Um, whether that's rock and roll music or whether that's jazz and blues or what have you, but we, we do end up coming up from it. And, uh, in real New Brunswick, truly like a lot of the music that I was raised around was a lot of CCR, a lot of John Prine, John Mm. Prine just infested himself in, in our ways and, and, uh, in our parties out there. And, uh, and, you know, a lot of good Stan Rogers stuff, but you know, ultimate, and I grew up in Alabama too. Like Alabama's greatest hits is probably one of the albums today that probably changed my life. Garth Brooks also his Ooh. greatest hits. Like when I hear the tremolo guitar part for Rodeo, come on, <laughs> oh, 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 get me the KY baby because <laughs> I needs it. Um, but you know that kind of stuff I was raised on, but it wasn't cool to play. Uh, and it was cool to play blues and rock out and learn ACDC and Zeppelin. And you, you do, I think that that's kind of just rudimentary stuff. And, uh, I think that any musician that rests on their laurels playing that stuff all their lives is nothing really truly more than a hobbyist. And you can quote me on that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wanted to, uh, like I said earlier, I, I found out that I, that I really love songs more than guitar playing. And I guess the transition and what the future holds is that, um, I found myself as a as a a competent songwriter. I wouldn't say that I'm great or I'm fantastic, but I am competent and I know how to write a decent song. Um, I can say that with confidence. But what I really want to find in 2024 is a really solid country band and a country band of workers that people of players that are of a set caliber that actually want to leave Vancouver Island and go work and do the thing. Um, that's really what I'm that's really what I'm all about right now. I just want to find a good band right now because uh there's a lot of bad actors in our industry and there's a lot of bad actors that want to call themselves pros, but the fact is that there is an unwritten job description of professional musicians, Adam, and you know this because you're a professional musician and you do all the things that are on this list. Yeah. Like you have to leave the island in order to call yourself a touring musician. Yeah. You got to do that. Otherwise, you're just you're just going on Vancouver Island up and down the island. Right. And uh, and and you're just doing you're doing the thing. So I don't even really need to give the people in public uh, a list of of what you need to be in order to be a pro, quote unquote, musician. Just go look at what Zonis is doing and then use that as as your guys' base plate for your plan. And you guys will be fine. But we don't have a band. <laughs> yeah, but you guys are doing the actual yeah. you guys are a duo. Yeah. And you guys and you guys do the pro thing. So for sure. I try my best. For me, last year I was a solo artist. I didn't have yeah. a band like I did yesterday. Starting yeah. yesterday, officially I have a band. Oh well that, really? The, uh, we did. We did a gig and we got well, asked for a second gig. So well, we congratulations. have congratulations. You know, thanks, man. It's well, a new step. That's, so that's why cool. I say we need to find players that that want to go work and travel because a lot of the grievances that I'm sure that you probably experience this too is that there are a lot of legacy Vancouver Island players that yeah. get the same gigs and yeah. keep playing the same gigs yeah. and they don't go off island. They're not releasing a new record. They don't have merch. Oh, so Hilding, uh, up, he's up in Northern BC. First of all, he says for the next song, you need a little bit more amp. And Thank he you. says he wants to have you up in his area for a house concert. 
Uh, uh, anytime, man. You name the so date. All, all you got to go is to the literal middle of just past the middle of literal mi middle of BC to the literal middle of nowhere. And uh, is it near Quinell? Because uh, if I can get myself a shot up, a Qu if I can get myself an actual gig in Quinell, that's nothing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, it's past, it's past Quinnell. He lives up near Burns Lake. Let's go. Yeah, 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 for sure. But if I'll, you're I'll burn, through, I'll burn the lake down, dude. Yeah, yeah, no. If you're past the tree, he'll think he'll put you up for sure. He's. Great. I don't want to burn. There's a lot of forest fires in BC. I don't want to contribute to that that pandemic. Figuratively burn it down. Yeah. <laughs> Figuratively. Figuratively burn. It down. Marty Stewart, Marty Stewart style. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. No, we don't want to cause any actual destruction. Just mental, mental destruction. Mental and musical. Yeah, yeah. So, um. I have this knack of coming up with band names and I'm hearing Jordan match it and the lit matches. That's not bad. That's not bad. It reminds me of a guy back home that was really a big promise. His name was matchstick Mike and he was yeah. a drummer and everybody wanted to play with that guy. His, I think his real name was Mike Mallet, but man, pardon me. He was, he was a monster. That's a good name. I used to have a band loosely in Kelowna. It might've lasted two gigs. It was called Jordan Match It and the Can't Beat It. And my oh, friend yeah. came up with it because if you can't beat it, match it. Anyway, I think I'm great at coming up with band names, but nobody ever takes my advice and calls them out. You know what? I, if I take <laughs> if I take that, I'm giving you straight up royalties for the rest of my career. Oh yeah, no, no, you don't need to worry about that. That kid's I, going to that kid no, of yours is going to Stanford. Me. First yeah, class, name, first ticket. For sure. I tell you what, tell you what. If you if 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 the lit matches ever get famous, just have us open. The lit cool. matches is a good name. <laughs> I might steal it. Like now that I'm saying this, I'm, and I'm like, like strike. Like you just yeah, do like yeah. a. That's the gift for for my band. It's just a right? strike match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, gosh, yeah. Adam, you're good. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, well, I hope that works out really well for you, and I hope they 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 turn out to be pros. I hope they're watching right now. Oh and man, some of my bandmates are are watching tonight. Yeah, and, uh, if yeah. If you push ups every morning, you know, go to the gym. Get ready to play music every night. That's what I expect from my backing musicians. You know. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I lead. I lead by example too, Adam. <laughs> yeah. <for sure. laughs> yeah. Well, it's like James Brown. You know, James Brown. He'd be on stage, and if you heard one of his band band like his backing band make a mistake, he'd like snap his finger at them, and it's like, "There's the bag of cocaine backstage. You go no, do no, some of that, and I'm back out." If, if you were in James Brown's band and you made a mistake you'd get fined like you'd get, oh yeah you'd, you'd get well, little, little little richard jimmy a lot of people don't know this but jimmy hendrix played a few bands before he ended up going, getting into his own his own mess um he played with the uh the kingsman first and then he ended up being after the kingsman he got into little richard's band little richard would fine you if you dressed better than him and he <laughs> find, and he find jimmy hendrix legendarily and like in oh, numerous man. times like yeah. you know 50 dollars off of the pay off of a 200 yeah. you know crazy sure. crazy stuff Nobody i don't do i don't do that to my band my band actually called me yesterday before the gig and they were like what okay so i remember you saying in rehearsal like don't wear sweatpants or jeans what can we wear and i was like just look sharp just yeah you right. use the word sharp and put that in quotes and put uh -huh. that on the middle of your forehead and say that's what i it's it's not a lot to ask guys you know throw on a belt tuck it in yeah call just, it a day show you care <laughs> That's all show I want. Him, yeah, show, show him you care. care. That's you all you gotta happen. do is put, just show you care. That's that's show all I ask for my band is to show up and care. Right? You it's know. not it's not bad, but it was it was a fantastic gig yesterday at the Lady Smith Eagles. And um if anybody is I'm gonna do plugs right now, just before you Yeah, 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 please. please uh, yeah, if yeah. anybody wants to come out and hear me play, I'm usually at the Eagles Duncan on Saturdays and Sundays from two to six, uh regularly, uh, unless I'm on the road. So Unless you see me or come follow me also on Facebook and keep up with where I'm going and stuff like that. And if I'm not on the road, then you can come on out down to the Eagles and Duncan on Boys Road. And I'm there every Saturday. And don't forget Country Day every Sunday from 2 to 6. The only country jam on Vancouver Island. Woohoo! Uh, and what about, what about some touring or anything else? You got some stuff planned this summer? Yeah, I'm I got I, I'm working on dates right now, as we all yeah. are, because right. we're Vancouver Islanders and we don't start in February because nothing's open. Um right. so <laughs> we, we have to start last minute like everybody else. Uh we got now that I have this band, I'm trying to find some band appropriate gigs. Um 
but right now I'm playing, you know, I'm playing a few things around here locally. I'm playing a an Easter egg hunt for the kids next Woo-hoo! next weekend on Sunday. I'm gonna That's I might I'm gonna play, I'm gonna sing Peter Cottontail. I might put on some whiskers aside from these. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Sing some Hank um, Free. It's gonna it, yeah, absolutely for the kids. <laughs> Definitely sing some Hank Free for the kids. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, I got get them on the opiates uh, accordingly because yeah. uh, in British Columbia we're able to prescribe those to our children. Just it's fine. It's yeah, absolutely yeah. fine. Christy, you know, yeah. Bonnie Henry is like, yeah, give out the fentanyl. I don't care. Um, right. So yeah, uh, follow me for 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 magical eggs at that Easter egg hunt that day, <laughs> and <laughs> and right after the Easter egg hunt, you can catch me at the Duncan Eagles high on fentanyl. Just I will, I'll, <laughs> I'll yeah, yeah. It'll, it's more gonna be like brown, down, down, brown, brown. Shit. <laughs> um. <laughs> But no, every Sunday after that, I'll be there um, playing the Duncan Farmer's Market on uh, April 13th, um, going on a string of dates for my birthday weekend in April. So I'm going to be playing the Nanaimo Bar on April 18th. April 19th, I'll be on Quadra Island. Uh, the 20th, I'm hoping maybe Adam knows somebody up there that might be able to hook me up with a house party. I don't know. Um, and then that's that Sunday, I play Saratoga Speedway, which I've been asked uh, for the second time to come back and perform at, which I'm, nice. I'm stoked. I love Saratoga Speedway. Speedway, any speedway really uh that i might be able to meet uh ricky bobby or the group of hell's angels that sell their merch it's always a great time so hilding here up there in northern bc he says he wants to have you at mom festival in august which i'll Let's be there go. we'll Dude, be there august so, yeah. i i'm not allowed to work in july so i'll <laughs> august i'm i'm hog wild for anything i can get my hands on i'm there Yeah. so august if uh, it's it's an hour and a half northwest of prince george so, okay. Do uh, I get to, do I get to play for an hour and a half? <laughs> I'm just. Uh, you know what? You'd be surprised. This festival has a killer lineup. They get like lots, man. Of, lots of different acts, and uh, you know what? If you want to play more than your set, there'll be campfires. You well, go all night. You did. You did ask me what I really want to do this year, Adam. And the fact is, I'm taking some time off from Alberta because I did go on two interprovincial tours last year. One of the few unsigned couch and uh, acts, actually, <laughs> the only unsigned couch and act to do so uh, in the past year in my community. Um, and what I really want to do in 2024 and 25 is plant more seeds in my backyard. I've been living here for five, seven plus years in total, really, over the past decade. And uh, I, w- I really want to go up maybe, yeah, again, north around, come back down through Squamish, can't, you know, all that kind of stuff. And just, uh, you know, just see more of British Columbia and, uh, and play to our play to our incredible people and, and develop our great yeah. audience. Hilding says he'll get Lionel on it. Lionel's the one who organizes the mom festival. Oh, thanks. Thanks, man. Yeah. And and shout out to you, Lionel, for putting on that kind of festival, man. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. No, Lionel, I'm just going to give some props to Lionel here. He's been putting on this festival in uh, Fort St. James Hell yeah. for years now, and they finally got the the, the venue that they've always needed it's awesome. right, beside the, right beside the lake. Congrats, uh, so guys. I don't know if you never like like a uh, Stewart Lake is like the most beautiful lake in all of BC, maybe. And it's you played warm. there last year, right? Uh, we played a house concert up there last year. I played Mom Festival. I like, remember. I remember seeing some photos years. of that, though. Yeah, it was kind of rainy when we were there last year. The year before, it was super nice, though. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, but they're swimming. Well, anyway, guys, it's guys thanks for considering me. I I come in a Ford Windstar van. I'm very self sufficient, and I'm mostly house trained. So I'm ideal. <laughs> I'm an ideal guy. There, no, there ain't no house training necessary, man. You're sleeping <laughs> in the tent. <laughs> oh, I bring a cat litter box with me. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I think we're going to call it and say we're going to have one more song here from Jordan. Sure. If you'd see another one, uh, I'm just going to do a little housekeeping here on my end. My name is Adam Zonis. I am part of the duo Zonis that I uh, Great do guy. with my wife. Uh, this is our YouTube channel. I would love it if you gave us a subscribe. We have a whole bunch of new musical content coming out. I also make some travel documentaries about, uh, you know, I did some about our trip to South America and I'll be doing those more continually through the summer. And uh, yeah. Zonismusic.com. I, I put all our my links in the description too. So uh, yeah, uh, thanks so much for coming in. Uh, thank you so much, Jordan Matchett, uh, for being my guest today and for being a great, uh, great musician. And uh, here's some tunes. Adam, thank you so much for having me, man. You're 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 the dude, and uh, really <laughs> appreciate you for having me on here. Yeah, great. This, uh, can you hear me okay? Play the guitar. Yeah, it sounds good. That's about as good as it's going to get, I think. That's it.
Yeah. This is, a, this is an old, this is a tune that I wrote called Maritime Dream. And it's, uh, it's a bit about that song about having to leave your home to go find home. Ooh. They said that you would prosper, sons, the new found land. All I have are two cold, blistered hands. But they said that you would prosper, sons, the new found land. All I am is dependent on the West. Tell my mom I won't be home for three to six long months. I'm out at sea and I'm hungry on the hunt. And tell my brother to keep my mother sweet company. For I won't be there to comfort thee. But they said that you would talk your son the new found land. All I have are two cold blistered hands. But they said that you would prosper sons in new found land. All I am is dependent on the West. It was early, it was early, 2003. I went and saw it work in Ford McMurray. I worked so hard, I stayed in a camp. I broke my back to get my stamps. On to afford my family. But they said that you would prosper, sons, in Newfoundland. All I have are two gold blistered hands. But they said that you would prosper, sons, in Newfoundland. Why am I dependent on the West? Cause that camp burned down, down to the ground, they said you could carry on. There's plenty of work down in Vancouver, sons. But that old bureaucrat, they're quite a drag. That housing market is a slag. Slag that I can't simply afford. But they said that you would prosper, son, in Newfoundland. All I have are two gold blistered hands. But they said that you would prosper, son, in Newfoundland. Why am I dependent on the West? Why am I dependent on the West? Well, now my family's moving all out West. Woohoo! Awesome. Thank you, Thank Adam. you so much, Jordan. Got a couple, few more, uh, few more comments. We got Michelle DeVries says, cool, cool, guys. Teej says, fresh sub for me. I love the podcast, Adam. Much oh. love to you and Jordan. And Trevor Lindy from up there in the... I love Trevor. Man, 
Okay, we got to stop right here. Trevor Lindy, if it was not for that guy four years ago when I first came here, I was busking down on Station Street, and he came around, and he took notice of me because I was one of the only buskers that plugged, that played their own original music instead of covers. That's how he got notice of me. And that guy, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have gotten the past three years playing the 39 Days of July. I wouldn't have gotten playing Craig Street Brew Cub brew club i wouldn't have gotten the uh i would have gotten playing for the uh the folk guild for for a gig that he got me either so shout out to trevor lindy i love you a great deal man thank you so much for being on my side all these years when nobody else in the room would thank you Woohoo! that's awesome musical family peace and love everybody we're here every monday 7 30 the podcast stays up forever on the youtube channel as well ciao